Hi and welcome to another Xamarin tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to add more screens to an Android app. So um, to do this we're going to use the example from one of the previous tutorials um, where I showed you how to make your first uh, Android app with Xamarin and that is the temperature converter app. So here I've got the temperature converter app um, made in one of the earlier tutorials which allows the user to enter in a temperature in either uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit and then convert to Fahrenheit or Celsius. Okay, and then it will display the result. So I've got the main.axml file here and then the main activity.cs file here. So just remember for each screen in Android you have a .axml file and then the code that is associated with that screen that provides all of the functionality is an activity file. Okay, so I've got a layout and an activity file written in C sharp. And so basically we need um, two more files if we want to add an extra screen. So we'd need an AXML file for the second screen and a C sharp file as well for the second screen that will give the functionality. So um, to get to that second screen, what we can do is add a button. And um, firstly what I might do is I'll add the button down here, but I'll just add some space before putting the button in. So we can scroll down in the toolbox and grab a space element and just add it under under this um, text element here. And we can click and drag that little circle to make it bigger. And um, there we go, that's it. Um, we could also go to the layout tab and scroll down until we see height, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we could change it there as well. We could change the value there in DPs. All right, now, We've got some space we can go and drag a button on. And um, basically, all this button will do is it'll just um, maybe just provide some information about the app or um, some instructions on how to use the app. Now, I know this is a pretty easy app to use, but just for a simple example, we're not going to be passing data from one screen to another in this app. We'll do that in another tutorial. All we're looking at is just making a second screen and navigating to that second screen. So it could be anything. Um, maybe it could have some weather information on the next screen or something like that. But um, for this example, we'll just create a help button. So for the text, I'll change it to help. So when the user taps this button, I'll go to a help screen explaining how to use the app. And then maybe some information about how to report bugs and that kind of thing. All right, we'll give it an ID. So we'll change it to help button, so at plus ID forward slash help button, lowercase help, and then uppercase for B for button, okay? So it's got an ID now. All right, so we've got the button there. Now what we need to do is we need to add a new layout. So if you go to resources, and then inside there you go to the layout folder. Um, on older versions of Xamarin, you could click the little cog here. Um, in this version, version 6, I need to right click and then click on add and I need to um, click on new file. All right, and we're going to be adding a new Android layout. So we'll click on Android, layout, and then we need to give it a name. So I'm going to call it help. Okay, and then just click new. Now you'll notice inside the layout folder, we have our main.axml file, which we're just working on. Now we also have a help.axml file, which is just open as well. So we can go now and add some stuff to this screen. So I might just add maybe a text large, uh, and on there I might just say instructions, and then maybe a text medium or text small. And we don't need to give these IDs. Um, so I might say to use this app, enter the temperature, and um, actually, what this is a good thing to point out now is at the moment, I just dragged a text medium um, element on, but this will only provide one line of text. Now, if we're giving instructions to the user, we might need more lines of text. So what I might do is delete the text medium element and instead grab, um, there's a text view that we can use. So drag a text view on, all right? And so now I can change the text for the text view and we can have multiple lines of text. So to use this app, enter the temperature value that you want to convert. 
from so just adding some instructions here for the user oops hopefully with no typos Lots of typos. Okay. So some simple instructions for the user. You could also um, provide some support instructions as well. Uh, maybe some information about the developer, um, links to other apps that they can download, that kind of thing. All right. Um, so we've got, we've got a uh, text view element there. You can also change some of, um, some other properties here, like line spacing. Um, you can change the font. You can change padding as well. Rules padding layout. Here we go. Padding. Sorry looking in the wrong section. So um, so you might want to add some padding to the sides there just so that the text is not quite touching the edge of the screen. Um, so to do that on the properties panel you go to layout tab and then just for padding you can change top right bottom left um, and also for instructions we could even add some padding there at the left so we could add like 10 dp padding. Um, there we go so there's just a little bit of space there on the edges of the screen there so the text isn't quite up against the edge. Alright, so we've got a text large element and then a text view element. We've added some text instructions and some padding. Um, and what we might do now is just add a button. And this button can just say, uh, if we go back to the widget tab, it'll just say go back. So when the user taps this button, they'll go back to the home screen and we'll call it back button. Okay, so at plus ID forward slash back button, one word, capital uppercase B for button. All right, um, and we can just maybe add some space there. All right, actually maybe a little bit more. Just like that, nice. All right, so now what we need to do is we've got our AXML file, which we can save, um, and now we need to add the code to provide this screen some functionality as well. So if we go to just the project folder, okay, not the solution folder, not this one, but the project folder, which is this one, we can right click and then we can go down to add, new file, and we need to add an Android activity file. All right, and this one we'll call help activity. Oops, so help activity. And I don't know why I typed P there. So just like that, help activity. So we have a main activity file and a main.axml file. Now we'll have a help.axml file and a help activity file as well, dot help activity.cs or C sharp file. Okay, so click on new. And now we can see we have our second C sharp file there for our second screen, help activity.cs. All right, open that file if it doesn't already open, which is, it's already open for me. And um, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go inside the on create method here. Underneath this line here, it says base on create saved instance state. And we need to add a line of code where it says create your application here. All right, so we can just replace that line with this. So set content view in brackets resource dot layout and then the name of the screen. So what we're actually doing is we're saying this code will be for this screen, the help.axml screen. So you can just choose help from that list, close the brackets and then in the sem semicolon, in that line with the semicolon. So we're saying that the layout we're using is this one, the help.axml file. All right, just linking it together. So that's what we need to do. Now we can go back to the main activity file and we can add some code now so that when the user taps or clicks on the help button, 
they'll be taken to the help screen. So back to the main activity.c sharp file, we need to add the code for the help button. So in the main activity class, we can say button help button. And then we can go down and link it here we can define it. So we can say help button equals find view by ID button temperature converter dot resource dot ID dot oops dot uh, help button. Now, if the help button isn't showing up here yet, just make sure that you've saved your main.axml file, the one that the help button is on. Make sure you've saved it. And now, now it's showing up. There we go. All right. If it still doesn't show up, you can just go up to build and then rebuild all and it should, um, it should show up. So now that's there. Finished off that line there with a close bracket and semicolon. And so now we've defined the help button in the code. Next thing we need to do is add a click event. So we've already got two click events for the Celsius and Fahrenheit buttons. We need to now have one for the help button. So, oops, just had a bit of a freeze there for a sec. So help button plus equals, and might just start that line again. Help button dot click, sorry, help button dot click. So I've got a click event plus equals, and then we can start typing help button and we need to choose this one here, help button underscore click. So that's a method that we'll create. Double click on that. And um, what we'll do is we can just press the arrows on the keyboard to choose where we'll create or insert this new method. So um, we can just have it up above the Fahrenheit button click method. So just use the arrows on your keyboard and then place it where we'll move move this blue line where you want this new method to be created and hit enter. And there we go. So we've got the help button click method just here. All right, now we need to add some code inside this method. Um, make sure, however, that you have this line here using android.content. All right, so we need to be using android.content in our project in order to do what we're about to do. All right, so make sure you've typed that in if you haven't up the top. And now start, um, we're going to start creating a new intent that will allow us to open up a new screen, which will be the help screen. So say var intent equals new capital I for intent. Okay, and then in brackets, this comma, type of, or one word, and then in brackets, the name of the other activity file for the help screen, which is help activity. Okay, and then we can close both of those brackets and end that line with the semicolon. And on a new line, we'll say start activity, and the, we're starting the intent activity. So just close those brackets and end that line with a semicolon. And that's basically it. So we've created a new intent, um, which will open the help activity. So it will um, start that activity, help activity, which will load the help screen. Okay, so we can save that. And now we need to go to the help activity.cs file. And we need to add the code for the button here so that we can make the back button take the user to the main screen again. Okay, so um, inside public class help activity, we'll make a new line. And there we'll create the back button. So button, back button. And then underneath set content view, we'll grab that button from the screen. So we'll say back button equals find view by ID button uh, temperature converter dot resource dot ID dot back button. 
Okay. And then we'll create a click event for this back button. So back, oops, back button dot click plus equals and then space. And we could start typing back button and we'll choose this here, the method back button underscore click. Double click on that. Then use the arrows to place where this new method will be inserted. We'll just insert it underneath this uh, on create method. So we'll use arrows to move this blue line down there and hit enter or return and there we go we've got a new method here called back button dot click inside here we'll start a new activity and we'll do pretty much what we did on this screen here sorry in this file here so we had bar intent equals new intent this type of help activity and then start activity intent we can actually go and copy this so we can highlight that copy and then we can just simply place it in the help activity dot c sharp file inside the back button click method so we can paste it inside there and what we need to do is change help activity to main activity so it will load the main screen when the user taps that button that's it now make sure that everything's saved that we can go and select a virtual device to test this on and then click on the build icon to launch it Okay, so the Xamarin Android player is loading now and should load up this app and we can go and test out our two screens. All right, so let's unlock the phone. And there we go. All right, so this is our main screen. We tap the help button takes us to the instructions screen. We tap the go back button, takes us back to the main screen of the app. That's it. So that's basically how to add a second screen to an Android app. It's the same process for adding more screens. So you just need, um, if, you, if you want to add a third screen, you need another .axml file for that screen and an activity file as well, activity.cs file for that screen. And we just create, um, a new intent in each screen to um, basically take the user from one screen to the next and start or we'll start another activity. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Um, in one of the following tutorials, we'll be looking at how to pass data from one screen to another. So um, we've just we're just taking the user from one screen to another. Later on, we'll look at how to pass data from one screen to another as well. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching.